another episode ready to go They're gonna talk about the good and the trash and anything in between Cherishing they believe get ready for Halloween It's the horror show I know you miss those guys Tune in and find out what's on their list tonight They butcher and dissect Take apart and mutilate Listen to your two favorite brainiacs communicate It's the horror show Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Show, the show that dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers all of your favorite and not-so-favorite horror movies and other horror-related events. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. Hello, Joe. What's going on? Nothing. We just came off a heater of a fucking Patreon episode uh, that Pick I kind of threw together last minute of ranking our favorite Christmas specials and movies uh, from God tier to shit tier. Um with three what? things in between. Uh it's exciting. It was a, it was a fun it's fun to go through those movies, man. They, they all have cuz you've seen all of them, right? Like you could go through like if we did like best horror movies, we'd all have like shit on the list that the other one doesn't know or like you know what I mean? And in these Christmas specials it's like you know almost all of them, like yeah, by heart almost. Um so it, it was a cool very cool thing to do right there. Um, and then you I think out, we're you left do... out Prancer, though. I'm a little disappointed. What the fuck is Prancer? Remember the girl finds a, a reindeer, like fell down her chimney or some shit. It might have just <laughs> fell down in her yard, but uh, she thinks it's Prancer. I mean, listen, there's a lot left out of it. I mean, <laughs> Hallmark puts out 47 listen, a year. Prancer sucks. There's <laughs> <laughs> a joke. Um, and, uh, I mean, which is worse, though, Prancer or the Ginger Dead Man? Oh, oh God, the fucking Ginger Dead Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Ginger Dead Man. Uh, a full moon feature we got here. Um, full moon is so fucking weird. So, this movie came out in 2005. I don't want to say that's... No. I don't want to say that's their heyday, but I feel like... It wasn't their heyday, obviously. No, because Puppet Master was Puppet Master. That was probably their heyday, right? Um, So 88 to 95 was like Full Moon Productions. So that's probably the heyday right there. Um, But, but, but Ginger Dead Man, I remember vividly it coming out and it kind of being a resurgence for them. And maybe I'm misremembering this, but I remember Ginger Dead Man coming out and it was kind of like, like a hokey, like, oh shit, like why are they making this thing? And then it became their entire fucking personality. They made the fucking 19 sequels to it. Dude, Ginger Dead Man and the fucking Evil, Evil Long. Long. Yeah. The fucking, what are we fucking, it turned into their entire fucking thing, which oh, so, Charles Man must be embezzling money, right? Like, you know how, <laughs> how in Breaking Bad they set up uh, the car wash just so they can money launder, right? Yeah. that's what charles band is doing because he's not why are you making this many movies like this there has to be some other reason <laughs> uh i need to pull up a list of list of all full moon movies um no it, it's very odd because and, and you know because of the the length of these as we mentioned we saw we've done two passion of the crust um <laughs> Because of the amount of sequels, I kind of thought that the first one might be a fucking secret heater. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Because, yeah, like, that, that, why else? There's logic. What? Yeah. Dude, if you ask anyone, like, hey, this movie spawned 19 sequels, they'd be like, how do you think the first one did? You'd be like, fucking great. Must have done fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. they just rode the coattails. That is, in my opinion, not the case. That should be everybody's opinion. I, I, <laughs> I have been very lenient lately, and I have been very yeah. open, and I have been enjoying life watching these movies. I the, the, I can't think of anything positive to say about the Ginger Dead Man. I, I want to share a quote. The horror movie website Bloody Good Horror said that this is one of the shortest yet hardest to watch films I have ever seen. That is that is, when I saw it was 70 minutes, I was like, perfect. Like we're going to get Gary Busey. We're going to get like over the top bullshit. And it like, it'll go by fast. Right. It was a chore. Uh, Gary Busey is in it for three seconds. The ginger dead man is in it for like five seconds. And you have to 
dude, they what are they doing? They they have so <laughs> many subplots that they are trying to cram into this. Like it's the movie's called Ginger Dead Man, right? <laughs> it, it should yeah. just be the child's play knockoff that it, it, it was trying to be, right? Yeah. They have uh, one of the characters being like a, a side, a wrestler on the side. They have uh, a storyline about the bakery being bought out by another company in the same plaza. They have a, a storyline about r- rivalry between two girls. They have a storyline about the girl and the guy knowing each other in the past and having like a love interest. What the fuck are you doing? And ninety percent of this is just them talking. I hate the Ginger Dead Man. <laughs> It is crazy. It is a crazy fucking movie. It was written by William Butler. Now, William Butler is known as an actor for a lot of things. Uh, Ghoulies 2, Friday the 13th, Part uh, 7. You got Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. He's in Buried Alive. He's in Night of the Living Dead remake. Uh, He's in Spellcasters. uh, And that's about it. And he directed... Not great movies. Uh, prior to this, <laughs> prior to this. Speaking of Christmas movies, he did make Three Bears Christmas in 2019, which sure, no one great. fucking knows about. <laughs> and he wrote all three Ginger Dead Man's. Um, very weird, very weird choice here. But you will know him if you look him up. His face as an actor, you'll know him. He's been in a bunch of horror films. Um, it is. It, it was. It was bizarre. And it, what what was one of the most bizarre things in this, as you mentioned, Gary Busey is the star. I, I don't need to run down any other actor in this movie, I don't think. I don't think there's a purpose to doing that. Um, they likely did not work <laughs> after this. I did like that one of their names was Ryan Lockie. Like, it looks like the fucking swimmer's name. It's not the swimmer, though. I, <laughs> well, I the mom the mom is uh, she's an established actress. Um, is she? She was Michael Caine's girlfriend in the original Italian job. So there's that. Man, it's such a fucking Paul fact. It like fucking <laughs> hurt my fucking head. <laughs> Margaret Bly is her name. Yeah, all of you guys that know her in the Italian job. <laughs> <laughs> we all remember her fondly. <laughs> uh <laughs> The Ginger Dead Man list of movies. So I bu- I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, well, I was going to say Gary Busey. Um, you know, that's who they're like peddling this as. And Gary Busey is in it for so short. And then he did not do that gingerbread man's voice, except for like a few lines that it sounds okay. like they ripped from like <laughs> scenes they cut. <laughs> okay. I was going to ask you because I was trying to look up because – there are times when he's like laughing and stuff, and that that is not Gary Busey. Like no. that's not him making no. those noises. But then there are times where he's like, "Hey there, Buster!" Like that's Gary Busey talking. Like, uh, for sure, for sure. I think they just took out shit that he said from cut scenes and used the audio. But it's only in like two or three scenes where like it'll cut and it's Gary Busey, and you can tell because like it's a different audio quality too yes. from yes, from the other actor. <laughs> so it's like it's, it's like when. <laughs> It's like when Insane Clown Posse paid Old Dirty Bastard to record oh. a verse. And he just sent them like a drunken rant. So they, they cut all his words and tried to make it into like a, a rhyming verse. <laughs> Fucking crazy, dude. Um, So let's see. We got Ginger Dead Man in 2005. Evil Bong in 2006. Dude, the amount of movies he puts out a fucking year is insane, by the way. It, it's actually like alarming. I did not expect to see this. 2006. Then we go to Gingerbread Man Two: Passion of the Crust, which also goes by another name. And I, at because at the at the end of this, uh, Amazon was like, "Next up, uh, Ginger Dead Man Two: Bakery of Blood." And I was like, "Dude, please tell me that there's two Ginger Dead Man Twos, like two different ones, but it's just a different name for <laughs> Passion of the Crust." Um, so I don't know why they're out like that. So yeah, Evil Bong, uh, Ginger Man, Ginger Dead Man Two: Passion of the Crust. Evil Bong 2, King <laughs> King Bong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they then like rebooted Demonic Toys also. I think that comes into play. Evil Bong 3D, The Wrath of Bong. You know what? <laughs> I think I'm too hard on these guys. <laughs> You're not. You're not. Think about what we just watched. Ginger Dead Man 3. 
Saturday night cleaver. Okay. That's good. Okay. I'll give him that one. Very <laughs> topical. 2011. Kids love film. <laughs> Danny Zuko. <laughs> whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do we have after that? Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong in 2013. So they've almost gotten 10 years. They've almost gone 10 years and the cover is Ginger Dead Man riding a bong that just has, it appears to be the Ginger Dead Man's face, which I'm pretty sure that's what it is. They just used his face. Yeah. Evil Bong 420 starring none other than Tommy Chong. Fucking... (laughs) The star of that, which I'm sure is maybe three minutes like Gary. Yeah. Uh, Evil Bong High Five, which appears to be the same cover as 420, unless this is just incorrect. Evil Bong 666. Evil Bong 777. (laughs) Uh, The Ginger... (laughs) The Ginger Weed Man... (laughs) <laughs> in 2021. Clever. Clever. <laughs> nice play on words. <laughs> Evil Bong 888 Infinity High. 888. And that's it. That's where we've left off there. Uh, they also started a... Um, it appears they started a uh, a franchise called Baby Oopsie. Um, which is, I think might be one of the demonic toys, and it appears they made a sequel to Sorority Babes in the Slime Bowl Bolorama in 2022. So fucking exhausting. And by the way, this isn't even a fr- I'd say this is like 10 percent of the movies they made in that period. There, there is hundreds of movies on this fucking list. Uh, Full Moon is a fucking disaster. And you know what's <laughs> so funny? I feel like they're West Coast's trauma. I because I feel like we have listeners on the West Coast. That like Full Moon a lot. In, uh, Dev, in the, Devin, dude, Devin subscribes to like, or he did at one point. Yeah. Remember when we did the uh, Head of the Family? Yes. He's like, oh yeah, I have a, I remember him talking about having a subscription to that. Correct. He does have a subscription. I think it is a West Coast, East Coast thing. Because I mean, I think I like Troma in the same way they probably like Full Moon. And, you know, Full Moon, like, um, what's the guy's name that owns it again? I'm sorry. Charles Band. Uh, Charles Band. I feel like he's like old Hollywood, right? Like wasn't his dad in Hollywood too? So he's kind of like, he's just like been around, right? Like he'll just like always be there. So I think like he's just like this West Coast guy and we have Lloyd, which I'm thankful for. I'm very thankful to have Lloyd. <laughs> At least somebody that fucking feels like he's being an artist. I don't, Charles Mann does not give a fuck. Charles Mann is just putting- No, that's a fact. That's a fact. Like look at Toxic Avenger compared to anything Band productions is what I except except for Castle Freak. Uh, you gotta give him gotta give him Castle Freak. Well, and the Puppet Master struck were good. gold. Pu- Puppet Master. Well, well. And I do love it? Doll Man. I love Doll Man, and I love the demonic toys from the, the original ones. Um, I know it's crazy, and Doll Man versus the demonic toys is a fucking low key fucking. Are we sure? Let, let's do yeah. let, let, let's let's do a serial killer. A Charles Band first era serial killer. You, you, okay, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Charles Band first era. I, I'm, I'm down with that. I'm down. With that. I thought you were like Charles, Charles Band. Band. I was like, like Joe, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Dude, this, dude, this <laughs> show, show, show it imploded. I'll never record again. <laughs> uh, that would be so fucking funny. Um, yeah, no, Charles, the Char- we could, we could do that. Like a uh, full moon eras. We could do eras of full moon. Um, just or we could not, uh, or we I, could I, not, I, I, <laughs> <I'm> not <laughs> and never watch a full moon movie again. I'm also very okay with that. Uh, that would be great for me, actually. Um, the dude, the Puppet Master, they did a, they did like a requel type movie recently. I think it was like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That was fucking good. That was it actually was fine. Fucking, yeah. But it, I don't know it, if Full Moon was involved. I don't think they were. Well, that I mean, that would certainly explain it. But whoever was involved <laughs> somehow pulled it off. Because Thomas Lennon is in that, right? Okay, okay. Uh, and so I think, I think that, like the comedian, it it's not listed at. Is that the littlest Reich? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I, I'm. I, I can't get into this because we've got the ginger movement to talk about. I mean, um, do we? No. <laughs> 
So Gary Busey's not in it. The movie opens with this. The movie opens with just like as the movie had started fucking 15 minutes prior and we all missed it. We walked in 15 minutes late. Dude, thank you. Thank you. I thought I thought the same thing. And I'm going to say something again in about five minutes. But yes, it starts in the middle of a heist. Dude, so it's in the middle of a heist where Gary Busey just shoots some guy dead. And you're like, what the fuck just happened? Why, why did that we, we don't know what Gary Busey is, what he's doing, why he's doing it. Uh, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, what, what the, none of this actually matters. For a movie that has so much talking, they explain nothing about anything that happens in this movie. And that is true. And you can't tell me otherwise. Because... Nothing about the ginger dead man existing in this movie is even remotely discussed for even like a brief second. You know what I mean? Like we've seen this, we've seen this formula, a serial killer or a crook or whatever child's play uh, uh, is committing a crime, either gets executed or does something and his soul is put into something else whether it be a person or a doll or fucking whatever. And then that thing is now a killer, right? Yes. We've seen this. We've seen this. It's a, it's a, there's a bunch of movies like it. Um, They all kind of explain it even to that extent. Like, Hey, this guy was a killer and he was so vicious. What, what, what's the one with the, the electricity, the guy that gets the electric chair. It's like Shock. similar to Shock. shockers like that. Right. Doesn't he yes. like, like the electricity, he, he's so fucking, they're so fucking angry that their fucking souls like take, take over something else. You know, um, that's like not even the case in this. This is, <laughs> this is not even that this is Gary Busey. So he, he's committing a robbery. He kills a kid. Then he kills another kid. And these are actually children. FYI. Um, or no. Yeah. Or no, no, one's the dad, one's, one's the, the dad, dad, one's the son. And, and one's the son, and the son, <laughs> the son, uh, he, he's he's actually given, like, six chances by Busey, because Busey's like, just stop telling me to put the gun down, and he's like, eh, put the gun down. You have to hear him say that six times in a row. Six and, times. Uh, guess what? Gary Busey does put the gun down, and then proceeds <laughs> to stab this kid with what appears to be a pair of tweezers. Like, dude, that would just, like... Like that would he's stabbing him in the back. Like maybe if he stabbed him in the neck, you could be like, okay, it pierced like his jugular yeah, yeah, or yeah. caught an artery. <laughs> like maybe maybe you did something. He is stabbing him in the back with the smallest blade I have ever seen, which would do <laughs> nothing more to just like you know annoy you. Like like it'll hurt, but it's not going to kill. You. He drops dead after like three stabs of this <laughs> on the scene. On the scene, <laughs> dude, it wouldn't even get through your lats before. Like it, like it's not piercing anything. It's but not hitting any internal organ, which it would have to to kill you from where he's stabbing you. <laughs> it does not, <laughs> dude. And that is not an exaggeration. He says it six times, but and he's not even saying. But he keeps saying, "Put your gun down, please, please." He's saying, "Please" every time. And Gary Busey's just like, "Please stop saying." <laughs> <laughs> um and that knife is insanely small and I, I i it made me think of that time that uh that fucking concert venue made you go back for your pocket knife that tiny little pocket knife <laughs> i was like well see now they've got a case they've, <laughs> they've got a case because <laughs> apparently you could murder somebody guard watched <laughs> ginger dead man before before the show he was like, hmm. No, I've seen this movie before. Not on my watch. <laughs> Not on my watch. Goof. Kill somebody with that thing. Um, it is not even a pocket knife. It's a keychain pocket knife that Tina got me on her wedding day. And it has my initials engraved in it. And it has like tweezer and like, you know, like useful things that I have used. But like the knife part of it, like you couldn't even cut a shoelace with it. And the guy's like, no way, buddy. He's like, I'm throwing that out. No, you're not. He's like, then you're bringing it back to your car. So I had to walk all the way fucking back to my car. Missed the opening act. Like, jeez. Oh, my God. It's fucking nuts. Um, so Busey does that. And then Busey's, like, saying fucking Busey shit. By the way, is Busey... Is, is, what, what, what's... Is Busey... I, I couldn't remember, and I didn't care to look it up. Is Busey in the doghouse these days? I feel like... In the age of social media in 2022, Gary Busey's probably – is Gary Busey yeah, alive? Yeah, I, I think he was just – would you say is he alive? Yeah, is he alive? 
No, he's alive. Yeah. Oh yeah. I so feel he like did, he I, just he just got he was in the news because he was at um he was at Chiller Theater. It's Chiller Theater in, in New Jersey, and I guess he was uh being inappropriate. Um, oh. I, I don't know the extent of the accusations. Um, you know, oh. he's he, he's severely brain damaged into that much. I mean, look look at him in this in this role. Like, well, his eye is open all the way. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at that. It got, got traumatic, <laughs> traumatic brain injury. I mean, it's so weird too because there was that period in like the 2000s where, um, for whatever reason, media. I, I shouldn't say for whatever reason. It's fucking psychotic, and everyone knows about this shit because it's like the same shit they did to Britney Spears and shit. Where it's like that, and, and it was so funny because like we're like paparazzi, nah, dude. Like mainstream media was like fucking ruining people's lives with this shit. And not only ruining it, but like fucking, uh, what do they call it? Uh, exploiting some of these people like fucking Charlie Sheen being a drug addict and getting on the news every night and like getting a fucking comedy tour out of it, out of being like sick. You know what I mean? Like being ab- like an addict, but like everyone was like, that's so fucking hilarious fucking hashtag winning and like Busey had that moment that's too sick. where it was like dude that, Busey had the same moment in the 2000s where it was like isn't this so fucking funny like let's bring out Busey on The Apprentice or whatever the fuck that show was <laughs> and, and like he was on all those fucking reality shows and it was like like you knew what they were doing here click that link I just sent you uh, in the chat um <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'll yeah, pull it up for our video. It's justified. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull it up for our video <laughs> viewers. That's not even a, p- a person's face. It's not a human face, Joe. Wait, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Great podcasting, as always. Uh, laughing uh, at Classic video gags. Bits. Well, we do have a video podcast now. And speaking of that, why don't you head on over to patreon.com slash I hate horror. If you want to check out all of these fucking uh, great visual bits that we're doing on the show here. And this is a song. Well, well, I don't listen to song. Just, fucking... just, just look at the fucking picture. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait. Just eyes uh, like bleeding. Is it too... <laughs> Oh, poor Gary Busey. Well, he was exploited. Uh, <laughs> the man, the man's not well. You know, he's not well. Why oh. are we c- carting these guys around? Um, where were we though? Oh, uh, the fucking first scene. We haven't gotten out of the first scene yet. So, uh, so he kills the brother. He kills the father, and then the daughter survives. He's saying weird shit like probably off the cuff being like i smell something feminine i honestly had no idea what the fuck he was talking about um and then i realized i think he was talking about the girl who he doesn't kill because i don't know why it's something about his mom he's like mom told me to i I don't even know i don't even know but it was a weird angle he doesn't kill her he shoots though and runs away um sorry i'm actually reading about busey right now dude he was charged with sexual assault and touching inappropriately at the at the uh um monster mania this this past august are you fucking serious yeah I know. was it was it like a fan or was it like a it's not another celebrity uh, i i I, I, I don't know I'm, I'm not reading that much into it I, i'm honestly just reading headlines <laughs> that's fucking crazy Anyway, sorry. I mean, it's uh, not. Is it crazy or is it not? It's not, it's not crazy. crazy. It's not crazy. Yeah, like, lock that guy up. I know, like, I I know you're saying he's not well, but he should be locked up. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying. Don't let him out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, then I... Like, stop. I'm saying stop, cart- stop carting this fucking guy around. Stop putting him on <laughs> okay. fucking TV. Uh, then I agree. Yes. Same with Charlie Sheen, right? Like, I like. why was he? Why were we like, look at this fucking guy. Get it? Okay. And we're, okay. I, like, I get your point now. I get your point now. Because, yeah. Why did Charlie Sheen have his own winning tour? Because he's not a stand-up comedian. And, he was uh, being a piece of shit. He was being, like, a grade-A piece of shit. Like, legitimately. And and everyone knew he was a piece of shit prior to this, all of this, by the way, too. So, like. <laughs> That's true. 
<laughs> it's true. like, what, what are we doing? Like, why, why are we carting this guy around and like giving him airtime? And like, like these guys are fucking disasters. Like let him go get, get the fuck out of here. Um, anyway, Busey saves this gal. Uh, he does not, he actually makes a point of even saying weirdly in this movie where he's like, I'm not going to fucking assault you. And she was like, okay. Oh, she was like, okay. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, but then yeah, he's got this. This is where he's like, I'm going to do right by my mother. And then he yeah. then he points the gun at her anyways. And it's about he shoots it. at her and then runs away. <laughs> you're you're actually unsure if he shot her or not, but he did it. She she survived, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> dude, we, my favorite thing was when he said, oh, shit, when he hears the cops out. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, it was surprising that they would be showing up. <laughs> active oh, crime scene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so girl survives and we get our title card, um, and our insanely oh, long credits. Oh, do we, oh, do we get our title card? Sean, this one, I like, I know we, we have talked about long opening Credit. credits before. This has to be the longest. Like I like my, I don't daydream. Like I, I, I honestly like focus pretty well most of the time. And I found myself like, like just thinking about things like I had no business thinking about and then be like, Oh wait, I'm watching a movie. And then like, <laughs> I was like, wait, is this still playing the fucking titles? What just happened to me? Like I never had a, an experience like that. Yeah. And there's still credits at the end somehow, which is wild. Um, <laughs> but they front loaded those credits for sure. Boy, I'll tell you that much. Um, and yeah, we have talked about longer credit scenes, but they were like theatrical releases. So like probably, with all due respect, those actors deserved it. This this is insane. This is insane. How many people were even on the fucking production of this fucking thing? <laughs> probably list like seven seven of them. Like that's probably it. Um, but we go back to this. That took place in a diner. I th- we're not at a diner though. We're at a bakery, which might still be the setting of the beginning i don't know i don't know it's hard to say um it is the same girl that got shot at at the beginning it's two years later i don't think she looks the same and might not be the same person i don't know no sir Uh, sir. yes and she's uh mourning the loss of her brother happy birthday big brother wherever you are up there i hope they have strippers and lone star and not the first not the only time that she'll bring up how much i love strippers (laughs) It's her only memory of her brother. Constantly. <laughs> like every time somebody's like, oh, it's your brother. She's like, yeah, it was his birthday. He wanted to go see a stripper. Like, what? what? She Actually, she says, we were supposed to go to the strip club. What, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> 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 Fucking insane. Um, so her brother and her dad are the ones that died. Um, and we also see some newspapers telling us that Busey was executed. Dude, that's the funniest part to me. Because... Like you brought up Shocker before, so I was expecting, I was expecting a child's play or a Shocker esque story yeah. where this guy killed killed loved ones of the main character. We know yep. this, so like they, we should see their demise. Like they should either be killed <laughs> and like by the police or by them, or if they're going to be you know executed, we should see that, and then they should like put a curse. On the family, you know, uh, this girl, yeah. this girl talked to the cops and got me in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Um, we don't see that. We find out because, like you're saying, the girl picks up a newspaper and she's like, oh, uh, this guy who killed your family. Like, she's so specific about it. This guy who killed your family, uh, it, he's finally been executed, blah, blah, blah. Dude, that was my, that was actually my favorite part because we already saw the clippings earlier than that. But then this girl's like, hey, thank God they fucking killed that guy. Am I right? <laughs> What? <laughs> and telling the person that would most definitely know. Like, I think she even says, like, did you see they killed? <laughs> Her family's fucking Especially crazy. since while she's talking about her brother and his love for strippers, she's like mentioning, she's like, I can't believe Findelmeyer did this to you. And it's like, she should be following the case. Like, this, she should not find out because her coworker found the newspaper and read it out loud. Choosing the name Findelmeyer for this fucking guy. Sean, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> An all time insane choice. Because I didn't even know what they were saying for so long. <laughs> Naming your killer Millard Findelmeyer in Ginger Dead Man. Like, what are you doing? 
<laughs> Joe, I was so confused at the, what the names they kept saying when they were saying it. I was like, who the fuck are they talking about? Like, and then I thought Miller was the last name, of course. And, and like, fin- what are we? There was Miller nuts. Findelmeyer. That's a great uh, villain name. Fucking idiots. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. Uh, <laughs> well, we jump right into this. Um, she gets a package delivered to the door and says, Grandma's gingerbread seasoning. This is yes. dropped off by a f- figure in a cloak that we see yes. running away. So you're like, oh, okay, good. Okay, so... This guy, whoever this person is, by the way, this Gary Busey was, wait, by the way, Gary Busey was just executed. How did she have clippings of it already hanging up on the wall? When that girl's got a newspaper, I was like, did you see the news? <laughs> <laughs> um, she gets a package uh, with this cloak figure that drops it off. So in my head, I'm like, okay, cool. She's going to deliver something with Busey in it. Or the ginger dead man. I don't know. This cloaked figure, though, is for sure evil, right? Um, And it is gingerbread seasoning, which I don't know if that's an actual thing or not. Like, (laughs) seasoning doesn't... I feel like that's not a thing, seasoning. See, you don't season cookies, to my knowledge, but I might be wrong. Um, And I also love... Like, we we mentioned that, like, why did they... Why why is this not a Christmas movie or, like, around Christmas because of the gingerbread aspect? Also, why does it take place in Texas? Waco, Texas. I don't know. What a choice. The gingerbread capital of the world. Oh, Waco, Texas. (laughs) (laughs) Um, From there, we meet another baker who, as Joe mentioned, is also a professional wrestler or wants to be a professional wrestler or dreams of being a professional wrestler. I'm unsure. He's wrestling. He, 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 like, uh, what do you call it? A uh, night. He it's a side gig. He he's a I'm side. Trying to think oh, of term for it. I don't know. I'm a little yeah. yeah. Uh, this. He, <laughs> oh, he's this I want nerdy... to go back for a second. Uh, yeah. When 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 she announces that uh, he or no, he's the one. I think he's the one that says it. Um, he gets cremated. Busey's character Findelmeyer gets cremated and gets sent to his mother, who is also a witch. Uh, and and she is she's the cloaked somebody figure. says all of this somebody <laughs> yeah, says something? yeah she is, she's the cloaked figure who drops it off so you know that what? I is, take back all my criticism <laughs> that is why we get that but that is also fucking insane like because what is her fucking deal why does she want why why would she want that to happen and also wait and again like this is like the other part of this whole movie because that's great again let's even that that's fine his mom takes his remains. Drops him off so he could finish the fucking job, which doesn't really make sense because he was like, my mom wouldn't want me to kill a woman. <laughs> but hey, That's a great point. <laughs> but hey, listen, whatever. Well, I'll fucking ignore it. Let's move on. I'm fine with that. But what if she dropped off the fucking gingerbread dough or the gingerbread cookie with his ashes in it? I'm fine with it. What it takes to make the ginger dead man is fucking nuts because they have to use the spice which they do from an unknown source which you would not fucking do if you got a fucking bag of ginger bread seasoning you'd be like i'm fucking throwing this away like i did not order this <laughs> this is fucking weird and also it do- it looks like ashes it doesn't look like gingerbread seasoning. <laughs> looks like human fucking remains uh um, actually you're making a great point because they have to use the the material and they also have to use human blood. <laughs> they have to use human blood. And, and Joe, if you uh, you might not recall, it also has to be, like, electrified, which happens because of, yes. like, a, a power yes. sword shortage. Yes. <laughs> because they're fighting and bumping to, bump to the circuit breaker. <laughs> it takes That's so, so much work. <laughs> Just baking him but not bringing him alive. And it needs the blood. Oh, my God. That's Busey's like mom was counting on a lot to happen by dropping off just the seasoning. So even if you left it there at that, I would be fine. But it's everything else that you have to do to create this fucking thing that is nuts. That is nuts. <laughs> like, why did you have to add all those extra fucking steps? Anyway, so as you mentioned, the nerdy baker that we just mentioned, who's also a wrestler, 
he cuts himself somehow uh, and leaks the blood into the fucking seasoning. Um, which the Gary Busey's mom was, I guess, hoping would eventually happen <laughs> to the seasoning. Um, and he continues to pretend that he's this wrestler named Butcher Baker. Um, it's fucking exhausting. <laughs> Good news is he's gone and we won't see him till the end of the movie for whatever reason. Hey, cut to an old woman who works at the diner or the bakery. And it's actually her mother. The mother. Yes. A character that we did not know existed until this moment. And we're supposed to give a fuck that she is now an alcoholic because the baking business is not doing so great. And her family's dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of understandable. Well, you know, it's not understandable. Uh, there's a sign next door. Cause they're putting up a, a competing bakery, I guess, in town, a big corporate bakery. She's not trying to shoot the building. She's shooting a gun. She's trying to shoot the sign off the fucking wall and, and with a shotgun, a shot. with a shotgun and succeeds. <laughs> <laughs> it literally just takes the pins out of the fucking giant banner across the store. <laughs> um, and the guy that owns the restaurant shows up and he is furious. Not that there's bullet holes in the side of his building, but that the fucking poster's down. Yes. Old Jimmy the D. Girl's like, <laughs> the girl's like, I'll put it back up. He's like, it's the f- fucking vandalism. You pff- it's more than vandalism, motherfucker. That guy is shooting guns. That's assault. That's <laughs> fucking crazy. He's so mad about that banner being down, though. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the bakery's in trouble. Dad and brother are dead. Dorky guy goes to his wrestling event. And uh, we watch our lead character, whose name is uh, Sarah. We watch Sarah rolling out the dough uh, in real time. We watch her make this fucking gingerbread man totally in real time. Um, and we see the most horrifying image of the ginger dead man. He's the most appalling looking thing, which is so bizarre because he's not fucking the ginger dead man yet. Right. But he's got this fucking horrifying fucking face. Yeah. yeah. Like paradelia. It, it's very human looking. <laughs> it's so nuts. Um, meanwhile, while that's going on, the restaurant owner's daughter shows up. I don't know her name. Lorna, Betty. I don't know. She shows up and she's putting rats in their kitchen to it's shut Lorna. down. Yeah, it's Lorna. Be- Betty's Lorna. the mom. Betty's the mom. Lorna, Lorna's putting rats in the in the <laughs> bakery's kitchen, which you don't need to do because they're already about to shut down. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah catches her and is like, You piece of shit, you're trying to shut down the fucking bakery. You're trying to get the health inspector. She puts one rat in the fucking bakery. <laughs> And and by the way, that fought red-handed. You just be like, "Hey, a hey, health inspector, this girl's putting rats here." That rat stays on that tray for the next forty-five minutes too. So. It does because the ginger dead man talks shit to it, and the, the ginger dead man has a whole bit with it. <laughs> it's a shining moment. It's the most he's on screen. It is the most he talks. Hey, you fucking rat, you fucking idiot! <laughs> like doing a Don Rickles routine to a rat, an actual rat. Uh, I hate this movie. (laughs) This movie sucks. Uh, So the restaurant owner, and then they get into a food fight. Uh, Lorna and Sarah get into a food fight after she she smashes a pie into her face. But dude, I think this might be the most realistic fight in movie history because it's just two fucking idiots, like (laughs) rolling around and like not landing anything and just like flailing about. Like I honestly think it's the most realistic fight I've ever seen. When you watch two people that don't know how to fight fight, this is what it looks like. It's it's exactly. crazy. It's exactly like it. it's fucking nuts. It's, it's I've seen this fight happen at Eastern several times. Um <laughs> this is fucking unreal. Uh well, while they're fighting, they accidentally bump into the breaker, as Joe mentioned, those ginger dead men, that gingerbread dough in the oven, it short circuits the oven, electrifies the oven. And makes the ginger dead man come alive. Dude, you watch the line of electricity. It's, it's obviously like fluorescent blue. It goes down into the oven, but then goes back up again. And then we have to watch it go back down before the ginger dead man comes to life. Yeah, it's the hit him twice. Um, <laughs> the, why would that? Why would they even do that? 
Because that's what they spent all their money on. So like, we better we better show it twice. <laughs> you ever like edit? So, you like mess with like some type of program you've never used before, and it, like you kind of get the result you want, but then it does like this extra thing, and you're like, "Fuck it, it looks fine. Like just leave it." I feel like that's what happened. <laughs> I feel like they did it, and then it went back up and went back down, and they were like, "I don't know if I like mess with it, it might get rid of the whole fucking thing. So why don't we just fucking leave it?" They're like, "Yeah, fine." Makes sense. Um, the the restaurant owner's daughter. Uh, I thought this was her brother, but it's not. This guy in the Janko so shorts her, that shows up. Her brother's dead. This is this is Lorna's boyfriend. No, I, I was saying I thought it was Lorna's brother. Oh, okay. No, no. That, but it's brother. not. It's her boyfriend. Because she, later she's like, yeah, I fuck him. You can fuck him too. And Sarah, or, yeah, Sarah's like not disgusted by that fact. She's like, okay. Yeah, is, <laughs> is it? Is it his name is Amos Cadbury. People naming the characters. This fucking, fucking unreal. Unreal. If I were the state of Texas, I would not allow these fucking people to film it. Yeah, Charles they, Band. They, Charles Band would would be uh, banned. Yeah, absolutely. Fucking. You, you, that's your Texas name that you come up with, Amos Cadbury. Get the fuck out of here. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, these two girls are beating the shit out of each other and just uh, smash the the breaker and called the ginger dead man to come to life, which they don't know yet. But uh, Amos shows up because he's just tired of waiting outside for his girlfriend (laughs) and immediately sees Sarah and is like fucking all over her. (laughs) Well, to be fair, he's like, what's going on in here? And there's just fucking chaos and they all have food all over him and stuff. And she's like, (laughs) and Sarah's like, Hey, uh, your girlfriend brought a rat into my establishment. And Amos was like, no, He's like, you said you were just going to drop off a note. <laughs> You'd see that the rat was huge. The rat was huge. She didn't have a gauge for she it. Was like, she was like, I wrote the note on a rat. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, guess what? They let the ginger dead man out. They <laughs> open the door and the ginger dead man runs out because they're like, I'm burning the cookies. Uh the ginger dead man runs out and immediately is like, I ain't the Pillsbury Doughboy and like runs away. But that's all we get. That's all we get from him. <laughs> and they're immediately like, they immediately work together, but they're also very like Amos is like, well, you're trying to tell me a cookie's a lot, which by the way, no one would come to that conclusion this early, but like, I think Sarah's like, I think the cookie's alive. And Amos is like, get the fuck out of here. You're fucking crazy. His tune will change so quickly, and he'll believe literally anything. Uh, short in like three minutes, he'll just start believing everything. Because um, he says this black magic shit isn't real. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, Lorna turns into a mangle expert here. Does she? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah because well, you're right. He changes his tune because he's like. That can't be alive. And then he's like, I think you were intentionally doing this. And Lorna's like, hey, re- reminds me of this time that I had a Ouija board. And she tells like the longest story of, of all time about evil spirits and how they communicate and how black magic can make things come to life. And then, and then she even, I think, specifically is like, hey, and also remember that guy that killed your family is dead now? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, yes, <laughs> that is true. Um, their phones... You know, this is the cell phone age, so they had to they have to write that into the story. Uh, she pulls out her phone and it's it it dies while she's trying to call her dad and not the police, which is great. Also, this cast will enter and leave this building constantly, but pretend that they cannot leave the building. <laughs> they regularly go out to their cars, they go out and see shit outside, um, but then come back in and then are like, How are we gonna get the fuck out of here? <laughs> It's alarming. It's also, alarming. Worth noting, uh, the ginger dead man is not a threat at any point no. until he transfers his, his soul. No, yeah, he's he's no, he's nothing. Um, mom is drinking and chasing rats. Um, she thinks she's hallucinating because she's the first one to see the ginger dead man. Um, and she reaches out a finger to the camera, like kind of like, Straight to the camera. Um, and the ginger dead man says, ever try a lady finger? Cuts off her finger. Solid cookie joke. 
And again, these are wounds that do not kill people. And like the mom is out of commission. We're done. We're done with the mom. She's like laying. For some reason, there's like a coffin nearby. She's like laying in. <laughs> Just waiting to be buried. <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, uh, I, I don't know why I have the, this is written like insane. This is like the weirdest note I have here. Um, but it's, it, it is revealed that it is Busey. They, they, they start thinking that it is Busey. Um, and again, you'll hear Busey's voice here where he's like, don't you recognize my voice? And it's Busey, but that's it. That's it until like a little bit later and they'll use another clip and you're like, are these even like, where did these come from? Like, it's so bizarre. Um, uh, one of the other girls comes to help, uh, everyone. It was the girl with the newspaper at the beginning who has like this weird, very short arc here. And the ginger dead man knocks her out with a pan. Yes. We don't know what her fate is. Um, and they leave again, like they leave the building, they go in and out because Amos goes outside to his car and gets a gun. (laughs) He doesn't leave with everyone in his car. He (laughs) <laughs> grabs a gun and comes back to the fucking building, which they don't know what they're fighting, really. Like, they don't... They haven't seen the gingerbread man yet. Well, they think he exists, and and uh, Lorna right. saw the face in the bacon. Oh, in that's the right. Oven. Lorna, that's right. Lorna does. Lorna, right. So we're taking Lorna's word for it. Um, So they're trying to fit in this complicated love story now with Amos and fucking Lorna and Sarah and Amos and him, it's just a 70 minute movie. Like you don't need this. You could, this could be real cut and dry and you could get away with it. And they refused. They were just like, no, <laughs> we're going to should have just been a, a killer gingerbread man. Which, hey, you had whole It's all you had to do, man. Uh, meanwhile, Lorna's dad shows up. The guy that owns the place next door. Uh, he, he gets run over <laughs> by the ginger dead man. Who is now outside and driving and using a rolling pin to <laughs> gas pedal? <laughs> Honestly, I pre- of all, I don't have many positive things to say, yeah. but there's other movies of this caliber that would just have him driving a car. At least they put the effort to explain how he was touching the gas pedal. <laughs> thank so, goodness. The so thank one you, Charles. question I had: How would the ginger <laughs> dead man operate a vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God they answered it. Uh, and dude, you, I think you watch him shift somehow with his fucking little gingerbread hand. I only remember because the hand was like grotesquely like weird. Uh, and also, uh, I can't stress enough how stupid the ginger <laughs> dead man's face looks. That I agree with. Like, it sucks. It fucking sucks. It's not good. It's not iconic. It's a shitty fucking uh, monster design. Period. <laughs> End of story. I hated it so much. Um, so the dad is the, the, the other dad is dead. He's gone. Um, the kids see some, uh, I think like powdered sugar or frosting footprints and they follow them into the freezer where, uh, that one gal from the beginning who read the newspaper is frozen and covered in icing with two little cherries for nipples on her breasts. Yes. You would think she's naked. She actually is not. She's fully clothed, as we'll find out later. <laughs> uh, which is great. Uh, next is... Uh, okay, okay. So Amos... This is where Amos gets a little weird, where he's like... He's like, it's not a fucking gingerbread man. Like, that's what he was... He was like, what are you guys, fucking crazy? It's not a gingerbread man. Somebody's doing this to us. But then, not only does he believe it, he's like... Who the fuck is in that gingerbread man's body? (laughs) Like, not only do they think that there's a gingerbread man alive, but now you have to jump to the conclusion that your family's murderer, his soul has entered the fucking gingerbread man. Yes. On top of coming to terms that there's a gingerbread man alive, you have to come to terms that also... It's the soul of a madman who wants to fucking yes. who killed your family. I don't think he really wants to kill you, but that's okay. Um, this guy puts it together by himself, though. It's fucking amazing. Um, and he breaks it down like the guy who killed your brother and got the electric chair has come back <laughs> and is inside a cookie. And you think he's going to be like, 
you're fucking dumb. And she's like, yes. And he's like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> he's like, I don't know what to say. This is horrible. Like, this is the worst news I ever got. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Lorna goes outside, finds her dead dad, um, and just begins wandering around for no reason. Um, and the ginger dead man catches her and says, how about a facial? And cuts her face fucking face like not that badly though just kind of a slash across the face very that's Busey's, that's uh what was his name fartle roy uh that's his uh Fartleby. that's his mo <laughs> yeah that's his mo that's his mo and and then we get the bit with the rat where he's like hey you little shit fuck off fuck off you little rat I'll kick your little rat <laughs> for several minutes so just doing a bit with a rat uh lorna leaves She's like, I'm done. I'm going to fucking get the fuck out of here. Um, but Ginger Dead Man has now created Home Alone-esque traps. <laughs> that is, uh, that's an exaggeration. Well, uh, he ties a rope. That uh, He has tripwire. Uh, if you are fooled by that tripwire, you deserve any fate that you get. That is the three inch war- rope. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I've never seen a rope that thick in my entire life. It's like what you would tie a, a large vessel to a dock with, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's, it's just, just somehow like, strips over. Dude, like you see like threads coming out of it. It's like actually like fucking alarming. Like it's fucking crazy. Um and she trips over it, and somehow this plunges a Bowie knife into her fucking skull. Yeah. Which is crazy. <laughs> um, also, that girl in the icing that we talked about, she's not dead. She's alive, uh, yes. I think. But she's on the floor twitching. Uh, so we're, we're unsure. Is she going to make it or not? Uh, but Pierce, she's fine. <laughs> she, she will, yeah. Yeah, just as actually, just, just as frosting on her. <laughs> Turns out that's the case for most of the characters in this movie, as we'll find out. Uh, so they're trying to call out the ginger dead man. They're trying to figure out how to leave, which shouldn't be that fucking hard because they keep leaving the fucking building regularly. Just and it's a cookie, so just fucking run. Um, and the ginger dead man starts taunting him like your old man and brother were stupid. They tried to stop me. They didn't. They, <laughs> they asked you to put the knife down uh, and saying things like you can't stay scared forever, Sarah, which. Okay. I don't think she was afraid. Like you're dead. You're supposed to be dead. Anyway, ginger dead man leaves her mom's finger out. So they see it. They look in the oven where her mom is being roasted. Uh, but the mom is actually fine, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The <laughs> stakes are very low. Here. The mom's fine. She's just she did lose a finger though. Um, she's not dead. Uh, for whatever reason, Amos takes the mom out and leaves Sarah in the fucking oven, which allows the gingerbread man to close the oven door. And when Amos turns around to release her, the gingerbread man hits him with a, a, another fucking frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so that guy's the guy with the guns knocked out. Um, Sarah's in the oven. It seems very dramatic. W- what's going to happen to Sarah? Well, Amos, who just got knocked out, has a moment of clarity. He he wakes up momentarily, grabs his gun, shoots, shoot shoots bullets into the the door to the point where I was like, what what is he doing? I. I thought he was supposed to be like trying to shoot the ginger dead man who's not there. And I was like, what? That's what releases Sarah though. And then Amos goes back to being knocked out. He he <laughs> goes back to being unconscious after shooting the door, which releases Sarah. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, ginger dead man's making cracks about a sappy love story. It looks like Sarah's days are numbered, but then the pro wrestler shows up. Uh, <laughs> James actually walked in at this point of the movie and I actually let him watch the end. Cause I was like, James, I've seen nothing even remotely offensive about this movie. Like I, there's nothing happening. So I think it's fine for you to watch. Like there's nothing here. There's no substance. There's no nudity. There's no violence. Quite frankly, there's not a whole lot. Uh, and he just died laughing when the ginger man, when the wrestler shows up and the ginger dead man says, what the fuck? <laughs> 
James like lost his mind. It was like this movie seems pretty good. I was like, it's not. It's yeah, fucking terrible. It's not James. <laughs> you just watched the best part of this movie, and that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and the the wrestlers here. He says, prepare to face the butcher, the baker tonight. Your ass is toast. Well, the ginger dead man has stolen the six shooter. It is a six shooter. It is a revolver with six rounds. In it, this ginger man man shoots 8,000 fucking bullets in this next scene. He's just shooting a gun constantly uh, throughout this fucking scene. He's just just a million bullets. Um, An icing girl is alive. She's back. And she's not, she doesn't have icing on her anymore. She's fine. She's, she has clothes too. And also the mom is alive. (laughs) They're all fine, actually. And they all leave the building (laughs) together. (laughs) But while that happens, the wrestler starts eating the ginger dead man. He's he's subdued him, and he starts eating him, and blood is pouring out of the ginger dead man. Um, it's all over the wrestler's face. It's psychotic. Uh, and he says, got milk, which I am surprised <laughs> he did not sue Charles Band. I mean, that. nobody saw this movie <laughs> that was involved with that legal campaign. And then you hear the ginger dead man's voice say, save room for dessert because I'm coming back for you. Don't know what that means. Uh, The stakes are so fucking low at this point because everyone is alive. They only killed the two people next door, I guess, because they were supposed to be really bad. But they really weren't that bad of people. So I don't (laughs) think that they had to die. Um, But the wrestler turns and is now possessed by the ginger dead man. Because they needed to string this movie out a little bit more. I mean, it didn't. If that was going to happen, that's how it should have happened from the beginning. Because you could actually like do something with this guy. He looks disgusting. He's more of a threat than the fucking gingerbread man. Who mom drops off the ginger dead man cookie. The guy fucking eats it, and then he he gets possessed. Yeah, because he is a threat. Because I mean. We're supposed to be scared of this ginger dead man, the actual cookie, who just gets eaten the first chance that like the guy has, right? Eaten. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, Should have done it from the beginning. And he says, time to finish our business. He's about to lay a kiss on Sarah with his blue tongue. Um, I mean, he's just licking her. I don't know. But anyway, thankfully, our Jenko Gene hero shows up. Old Amos shows up. Uh, shoots him four times, but nothing happens. Um, so you're like, oh man, this guy might be indestructible. They just shove him in the oven very easily. They just kind of push him into the fucking oven, close the door, and <laughs> burn him alive. Uh, which is hilarious because that is also their friend Rick that they just fucking killed. Like, that was so crazy. <laughs> there was no like end of the possession, and so the ginger dead man's soul is still around for a sequel. They just fucking kill Rick with Gary Busey's soul in there. This should be the end of the fucking franchise right there. And they <laughs> murdered their fucking friend for it. Uh, it fucking crazy. R.I.P. Rick. That's the end. R.I.P. Uh, Rick. And uh, the bakery reopens. They're back in business because they their fucking rivals were murdered. Dude, the police would be so... Dude, the police would fucking... These people would did, be in jail did, forever. Did explain this to anybody? You killed the <laughs> rival people next door and murdered your friend And Rick. your employee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fucking nuts. Um, But it's not. The, the bakery's doing great. Tons of people are showing up, including nurses who are like... <laughs> Dude, two, two women who work in the hospital show up and are like, thank you for your service to the bakers. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency responders thanking the bakers for their service. And they're like, oh, it's just part of the job. Um, and Jenko dude is like slobbering all over Sarah. Amos is just slob- like over the food. It's honestly fucking repulsive. Like, it's a, it's a, they're like, oh, she's like trying to serve and he's like groping her. It's fucking nuts. Um, and then one of the nurses says, hey, some old lady dropped these off. Yeah, his mom's back. They open up the box and there's some gingerbread men that look like shit. Uh, and with googly eyes, I'm pretty sure glued on to them. <laughs> and that, that that's their eyes open and they're just googly eyes glued on to the gingerbread man. Um, and that is the end of the ginger dead man.
Yes. Hey, Joe, would you recommend this movie to Absolutely anyone? Absolutely not. Never. This sucks. No. I hate it. I'm glad uh, I never have to watch it again. So, yeah, this is not a good movie. This is not a good movie. Um, I am excited for next week, man. Next week, we finally are doing it. Uh, we are doing... What are we doing? We are doing Black Christmas 1974. Thank God. This was a short episode, man. Thank but God. It was, yeah. It's nice. But if, you, if you're if you looking for more content, head over to patreon.com slash I hate horror because we did an hour long bonus episode with a structure. So with a structure and it was fun. It was, uh, and it was a uh, movie oriented, which is, uh, you know, all surprising. We'll always but... do that, uh, which is funny because we're a movie podcast. But yeah, check it out. Yeah. It was no, fun. That's, yeah, there's no horror movies listed in that list, but hey, hey, that's what we're here for. Fucking we're here to deal open with your that. eyes to open your eyes to things like Ernest Saves Christmas as one of the greatest of all time Christmas films ever made. That's so indisputable fact. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so next week we got Black Christmas and then uh, Dead End uh, from 2003, and at some point we will do a live show in between. Yes. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, patreon.com slash I hate horror. As I mentioned, I hate horror.com. The store is down for the moment. We do have some things coming up, things in the works that might change. So we got to wait a little bit to see what happens. Um, and then the store will be back up. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, anything else? Uh, facebook.com slash I hate horror and at Instagram at I hate horror. Joe, where can they find you? Uh, Instagram boogish 1985. Also check out, uh, all documented, all true's Instagram page. It's uh, the title with underscores after each one. So okay, wait. So <laughs> is that that's a real page? Like, is that your page? Who made that's me? That? That's I meant me. to ask. Yeah. Oh, you picked the hardest fucking name to fucking promote the. Fu- it's I, the I name thought it was of a listen- show. I thought it was a listener's thing. I thought it was a listener like dedicated it to us. Like uh, a that? listener. I mean, I could change the name. What do you want to change to? I don't know. It's the name something the something show. that we can say. <laughs> all, it's all documented, all true, with underscores after each word. <laughs> Rolls off the fucking tongue. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll think of something. I think of something. Um, okay, so that's a real fucking page. Okay, I meant to. I yeah, keep man. meaning. I kept meaning to ask you about it. Um, hang on. I'll add it. Everything I, I post right is uh, fact. So oh, don't give me any know. shit. It's it's real. And I believe it all wholeheartedly. Absolutely. Uh, so check that out. Um, and, and also check out uh, All Documented, All True on Patreon. Uh, on yeah. Patreon. That's what I thought you were going to say. On Patreon, yes. Uh, we did the episode on... Was the most recent one The Mothman? Yeah. Yes. Mothman. So that's our most recent one that's out right now. Yes. On we got one. We're recording Tuesday. Okay, good. Um, and then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, that's all. That's all. That's it, folks. Um, so I feel like I'm struggling to end this for some reason. Uh, Black Christmas next week. Adios. Uh, and for Joe, this is Sean. Stay weird. Thank you. Adios. I Fucking zombie getting sliced and diced. The monster.